Welcome back, everyone, to the Bitcoin Business Bureau. I'm your host, as always, Litecoin Leader. It's another day in Alcoinopoly land, and we're talking about another cryptocurrency, another space on the board. Today, we're talking about something that's not quite that sexy of a topic, but it's very important for businesses, not just in the U.S., but across the globe. Hence, a good use for cryptocurrency and blockchain and the intent of blockchain, which is as a ledger of information that's immutable or unchangeable. That is hugely important for companies that need to keep track of things from anywhere from where did their supplies come from to where did their parts go? Uh, or even if you're just watching over the food supply and just seeing like, is it really farm to table? Is it really organic? Where did this, where did the salad really come from? Where did this cheese come from? Where was the milk? Where was the farm? What animals were used? And so on. All that is considered logistics and supply chain. And this coin that we're going to talk about today, who's been around for years, it's been a great use case for them, and it's being adopted across the globe. And it's a great cryptocurrency project to be involved with, not financial advice, of course, but it's a good project to be aware of, to keep track of, and it deserves space on the board. So let's dig into it. Just a quick reminder that nothing in this video is considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Seek out your own advice and do your own diligence, do your own research. As we like to do when we start out the Alconopoly pieces, we start with the bare slate. Here's the game board. So today we're talking about zone two, which is on the left side of the board. Again, that's zone two. And the zone two is reserved for DeFi and finance coins. So that's talking about coins that are deep in the DeFi, the, the DeFi sector, finance sector, company uh, oriented coins and projects that make a lot of sense for the economy. And one of those big coins this week is about supply chain and logistics. And the number one coin for this is a coin that started back in 2015, been around for a long time, started a lot of partnerships, and that is VeChain or VET. That coins, again, it was started in 2015, has a number of partnerships, which I'll go over, but the number one coin for supply chain and managing logistics is VeChain. So that's the coin for today. That's the space where it goes. Mark it down, keep an eye on it, and we'll be coming back to this board a little bit later as we add to our new feature. Analyzing VeChain in the news is a little bit tricky because not a lot of coverage is done for supply chain logistics. It's just not written about that much. But let's start at VeChain's homepage, vchain.org, and go over where the project stands. Uh, first off, VeChain Thor, that is the native blockchain for VeChain, and it's also its white paper. It also speaks to the VTHO, which is its gas fee, which is used. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but scrolling through the, the main page, you get a lot of information. So um, there's lots of different research you can do throughout the page. But the main takeaways is that you have it's got its own native wallet, uh, but it's also supported in many wallets like Exodus, where you can actually do staking. You're, if you stake the VeChain, it's virtually automatic, where you actually get VThor on a periodic basis and get a good rate of return. Um, the It's a proof of authority project, sort of a proof of stake, but there's 101 approved validators that are authenticators that have a, I think that you have to have 15 million VeChain to be approved just to be considered to be approved, to approve and authenticate the transactions. The, it adds a little bit of centralization to it, but it also adds a ton of speed. So there's good value to doing this, even though it's not fully decentralized. Building upon that, we look at the, again, 101 authority master nodes. Uh, we talk about the governance and the economic model. This is an important economic model. So you can think of this as like two tiers. The upper tier here is the V-chain, which does business activities and financial activities. And then there's the energy or gas that funds the activity, which is allows for payment transactions and smart contract execution. So you can put a lot of things into a smart contract, have them execute with a VTHO or VThor, and that is the liquidity that's used for the VeChain blockchain. So if you're using the VeChain blockchain for logistics and supply chain tracking, you'll be using VThor as well. So to build upon this, uh, it's getting a lot of popularity because there's it's, it's a cryptocurrency. 
and it's the number one logistics blockchain that's solution that's out there. Um, I'll include this in the in the write up as well. But there's a ton of partnerships that are documented. Here's a good page that documents all of them, or as many to date as it is current. It's a long list. There's big players like BMW and Price Waterhouse Coopers. Uh, the one hesitation here is there's a lot of Asian countries, including China, that are represented a lot on this list. So it is a global um, endeavor for, for VeChain, but Price Waterhouse Coopers is global, as is BMW, but there's a lot of China mentions in here too. But it's still the number one logistics and supply chain project. Uh, I believe they're working with Salesforce as, as well. So there's a lot of good partnerships already established for VeChain as, again, the number one company in this sector on the blockchain. So I will also include a couple other videos that are good. Of course, I always like uh, Coin Bureau and his take. He's done two solid videos on VeChain and the blockchain supply chains as well, but also highlights why VeChain is doing so well, even as recently back in, in April. So that's a brief summary of the, the, of the news for VeChain. Again, there's not a ton of news, but the main takeaway is that it's the number one blockchain for logistics and supply chain, which is a growing sector, not a sexy sector, but it's a it's a necessary evil for a lot of companies that they have to keep track of everything that they produce, consume, purchase, and ship. And this VeChain allows them to do that efficiently. Now let's take a look at the charts. Taking a quick look at the charts that we typically look at for v, for the coin against US dollar and against Bitcoin, we can see that there's a skew to the chart back in 2018 when VeChain really came onto the scene. Um, it's not really a fair comparison to look at that far back because of the skew that's happened back then. So we're going to focus mostly on the last year. But before I do that, I want to start over on Coinbase, excuse me, CoinMarketCap. And take a look at where VeChain stands. It is the coin number 21, 22, 21. Uh, the market cap is, it's right at 7 billion and change. It's still a top 25 coin, but there's a lot of room for this still to grow. It's in my opinion, it's not financial advice, but just my opinion. There's 64 billion coins already issued. I guess a potential 86 in circulation, 86 billion. Um, but if you look at the market cap at seven billion dollars, as logistics and supply chain gets more and more placed onto the the blockchain technology, the leading company is going to lead that going forward with partnerships with companies like Salesforce and others. I could see this doubling or tripling. So a, a triple would put this at twenty two billion, which right now would put it just into the top ten. But I think the top 10 would also grow accordingly. So I think you're looking at a top 10 to top 15 coin still, but the leader, leading company in supply chain and logistics. So I think there's plenty of room in this market for a triple up for VeChain. Now, VeChain's all-time high occurred back in April at 28 cents. Uh, I think that's listed. Yeah, there we go. 27.8 cents. Uh, the present price is only 11 cents. So a triple would be 33 cents, close to its all-time high, just a little bit over it. So that's the potential I see it in the medium to long term. I'd say, I would say potentially by the end of the year, it's very hard to pick out a timing, but as more and more trustless systems are adopted and required so that people know where do their resources come from, where do their products come from, companies can say the same thing. Uh, are we green enough? Are we using the right things? Is this organic food or not? The tracing, having the ultimate traceability of, where all our materials come from for all our products. It's going to be adopted at some point, and VeChain is going to lead that path. So let me look at the two final charts looking at the last year or so. We're going to look at the price of VeChain against the dollar. It really started to pick up not just in price, but also volume. There's a lot more interest now in the last three or four months, maybe five months, on getting more and more logistics on the blockchain. So the coin went from a penny up to 28 cents and then retraced back it's a healthy retrace so far it may be turning the corner to go back up but assuming that this is a full retrace to this point uh you're looking at about a 60 percent pullback a little bit a little bit larger than i like to see but still within that reasonable range uh, but doing a fibonacci extension we could see that the the target could be 35 to 52 cents 
So that puts it in a triple to quadruple kind of window. So that is there's a lot of potential. It's a good time to get into VeChain based on the charts. Again, looking at the VeChain against Bitcoin, similar kind of pattern. We see a a, a, a healthy swing up. Um, I'm just going to look at the last year to make, zoom in. The volume picked up in the last few months. Again, a nice upswing and a retracement. A similar extension could be had. Again, the, I, the pricing on the other chart makes more sense that it could be triple or quadruple. But the chart looks very similar where we had a run up from, you know, 50 Satoshis up to 400 and then pull back to the 250 to 300 range. So reasonable room for this to run a double or a triple here. I think it's a solid project. The charts look like it. The charts are telling me that it looks like a good time to hop on board. So there's the coin for today. It's VeChain, the leader of all the supply chain and logistics coins that are out there. There's several competitors that are out there. Uh, I like some of them, but the number one I like that as far as supply chain logistics is VeChain. It's been around the longest. It has the most partnerships. It's the most ingrained and it's got the best technology so far. There are some competitors that's coming out there. I, there is one more that I'm gonna save for my subscribers that I'm gonna talk about in a, a, later this week. But for today, the coin is VeChain. It's got some great partnerships. Now let's take a moment now and take a look at my coin rating for this particular coin of the week. So starting once again with the Bear All Coinopoly board, we're gonna talk about the new feature that we've added this week which is the coin rating system. And to go through the summary one more time about what that system is based on, it is a scale of one to five, where we rate for the weakest all the way up to the an average project, the three, it's one house, two house, three houses, four houses for a strong project, and then finally a hotel for our highest rating. So there's your one through five scale. Going back to the coin for today, which is again in zone two in the D5 finance sector, that is the VeChain project. So VeChain being the lead supply chain and logistics coin, it has to get a high rating considering all the other factors we have about the price, where it looks at the chart, the staking potential, and I'm going to give this a four out of five. Uh, that's the rating for VeChain. It's not quite perfect, but it's got strong upside, both in the potential of the project, the strong likelihood that a lot more companies are going to be adopting it and the potential growth sector that it's in. So it's got a lot of price appreciation that could possibly come and going forward. So it gets a four out of five from me. Not financial advice, but that's my opinion on VeChain. So there you go. So that'll wrap up the video for today. We have VeChain and we're getting a prominent space in the, uh, the, the DeFi sector of the board, the finance sector, because it deserves the spot in finance because these companies, they, they need not just finance, but they also need supply chain and logistics to be successful. So it's part of the core uh, balance of what companies need to do. They need to keep track of their inventory. They need to know where their products are coming from and where they're heading to in case there's ever an issue down the line. And also consumers want to know this information too, to know that their, their organic products are really organic and that their products are really coming where they say that they're coming from and if they're really containing what they're supposed to contain. So. Plenty of information out there. The number one supply chain coin, I think it's gotta be on your board. So plenty of information for you guys to digest today. I'm gonna close the drawer on the bureau and I'll see you next time. Yeah.